things also going in the paranormal with you? I mean, with your, uh, your talk been show. Going, been going pretty good. I mean, uh, I did an investigation August 11th. I took a lot of pictures. I, You know, when I investigate, I always... Uh, with my abilities, I can feel and sense. Sometimes I can see these spirits, and there was a, there was four or five of them. I think I count like seven of them. I can feel cowering in a corner trying to hide. So I always take pictures when I investigate where I can feel them or see them. I take two or three in a row. I took two in a row. Didn't think nothing of it. I took a bunch of pictures, and about three weeks later, I'm still going through pic. I'm still going through evidence, you know. And I'm looking. I'm like, holy cow! There was. Uh, face plain as day of a lady plain as day sticking right out and it was it was amazing was it in the first picture but it sure was in the second one same same thing it was amazing but it was just one of the things sometimes you can get them on pictures sometimes you can't sometimes you get evp sometimes you can't you know it, it's just <laughs> it's hit and miss you never know I know, like Larry was saying, my my guest for tonight. You know, they they uh, were at this old uh, uh, church, you know, and uh, it was really creepy. And you know, and next to the cemetery, and his friend uh, didn't Dan, you know, just did, wouldn't go into the cemetery. He felt really sick and all that stuff. So Larry, yeah. you know, took his camera out and decided to take a couple pictures of the window of the upstairs of this creepy church, right? Yeah. And he captured a man, an uh, image of a man and a woman that uh, was not in the building physically. Right. Yeah, you never know. That's why I always pictures I always take two or three in a row. That way, if, if, if um, you know, you can compare the two pictures in a row simultaneously, and that's usually a good way to indicate if you've caught something or, you know, can debunk if it's a bug or moisture in the air or if it's, you, you know when you caught something. You can tell if it sticks out. I mean, this woman's face was plain as day. It was no no getting around it. I mean, I know there's Matrix scene in, in Paradelia, but this one was, it really stuck out. <laughs> well, have you, James, have you ever got scared uh, go, in any of your experiences of ghost hunting? Uh, or nervous? How's that? I, I'm pretty much fearless, honestly. Now, I have had some things that have stopped me in my tracks, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I've seen some things appear in front of my eyes, me and another person, and it, it literally stopped me in my tracks. Like, <laughs> I mean, when you see something like that, it stop, it stops you in your tracks. Um, I see, there was, yeah, there's been a few things that more um, shocked and awe. Like, like um, more like, more like parlor tricks almost that, that, distracts you just enough that that things can do other things and gives them enough time to get away or do something else and it it it, it will shock you it stopped me in my tracks three times in my life yeah yeah easily well oh, hey, yeah well we've known each other now a little while I, I gotta ask you a question what got you into ghost hunting in the first place um, I was always just into the paranormal. And I, I always kind of had abilities, but I tried to ignore them, you know, when you're younger, and I try to ignore them, try to ignore them. And then when I was about, I don't know, like in 1985 or 6, I, I was staying with my cousin, and, and uh, there was an older man who died there and, and where we lived with me, me and my cousin, my aunt, and every night he would move my clothes man and i was like <laughs> what is, and i knew it, and i was trying to ignore it i didn't want to be bothered with abilities and stuff you know i'm, I'm like 20 years old or you know 22 i didn't want to be bothered you know and, and then about a week later it it sounded like a, a giant stainless steel pan full of other stainless steel pans slammed on a wooden floor right beside my bed and and my cousin come running in, my aunt come running in, and they, after they peeled me off the ceiling, I was like, what? <laughs> that scared me. That, now, that that scared me. There was nothing moved out, nothing out of place or nothing. It was so loud. Oh, my God. So I was like, you know what? I started I accepting some of my abilities and started investigating stuff on the weekends. And it was different, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. It wasn't like now. It was like, you know, hush, really hush. Us. So I would do it on the weekends and, and and I just, I don't know, I was just into it, just wanted answers, and I've seen so much, I don't need any more answers, that's for sure, but uh, that's what got, pretty much got me going into it. I, I know, I, I've i had some weird things, like running in with a friend of mine, you know, uh, with a Bigfoot that time, uh, with a doctor up in the Canadian Rockies. Then I had that problem when I, you know, uh, managed a camera store in an old building in Tacoma, 
I had a creepy thing there, but you know, it's been two other weird things that happened to me when I was a kid, about six years old or something. You know, my, I was just mentioning before you, you called that my, my parents would send me to Oakland, California, like for most of the summers, uh, to spend with my grandmother, Sally, and then, uh, my uncle and his kids. And my grandmother lived in an old, well, cause Oakland was old, <laughs> Uh, old uh, apartment building and the bedroom, you know, was huge. At least it was when I was that age, you know, it's, yeah. and it had a walk-in closet, but the bed would pull out of the the closet and kind of fold down. And it was really eerie, you know, and had a lot of like windows and all that stuff, you know, and like the, the doors were like with glass in it. Anyway, I, I remember one night that, uh, you know, I went to bed and, you know, the, I, the the light, I always slept with a light on, you know, like a nightlight when I was that age. Yeah. All of a sudden, I watched a shadow come out of the closet and kind of go around all the walls, you know, oh and yeah. and then go back in the closet. And it, it freaked me out so bad at that in the morning, you know, after I, you know, like I covered myself under, what is a blanket going to protect you? You know, it is not, it's not going to protect you, you know, yeah. uh, you know, and I was thinking maybe going under the bed, but I was scared to go under the bed after that because I thought it would pull me in. But anyway, I, I told my grandmother, I said, you know, I saw this shadow and she goes, well, cause she lived there like for 40 some years or, or more in that same apartment. Right. Uh, and she said, you know, I've seen that numerous times and you know what? I said, okay, it's time. Uh, Grandma, I love you, but I need to go to my, I need to go to my uncle's house tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I can't stay here. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> I had to move out of my aunt with, from my aunt and, and my uh, cousin <laughs> when I was like 22 because I couldn't take it no more. The, the old guy was just, I was like a beacon of the night to him and I just, I didn't want to be bothered, and he wouldn't let me sleep. And it was like I just I got to move. <laughs> oh yeah, I had to get out of there. It was awful. And the you know, and the other time is you know my parents bought their house in Seattle, West Seattle, uh, in 1951, I believe, because I was born in 52, and they bought it brand new. And next to us, you know, in Seattle at that time, back in the early 50s, was this. You know, parts of it was still kind of hickey areas, you know, yeah. even oh, in yeah. Seattle. And so the people next to us or the guy next to us had like, and he was old. He was like in his 80s. He had like a little farm thing. He had like maybe, maybe two acres, you know, all in, you know, fenced in. He lived basically in a shack and then he had a shed. And uh, one day, you know, I used to go there and, you know play with this stuff and then he'd come chasing after me but one day uh we found him hanging in the shed he hung himself oh man so you know then you know whatever relatives he had you know they came out and must have sold the property because they bulldozed everything down and built a brand new house and then our neighbors moved in the house you know uh, all of a sudden you know they would come over and talk to my parents all the time too much actually uh, they started saying, man, this house must be haunted for some reason. Things are moving, doors are slamming, all this stuff. And, you know, then my dad says, well, don't you know who what happened? You know, and they explained that the, the prior tenant of that property hung himself. Right. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize land. Man, land could be haunted. You could build a new house on something. That doesn't mean it can't be haunted or or affected by spirits from past history of the land. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. No. It's funny. Oh, go ahead. Now, you know, this is mostly, you know, people are not used to me uh, taking calls yet. You know, I just started I'm doing. I'm not used to it either. <laughs> I, I just started that last week. So I'm happy to get one or two phone calls on Friday at this point because, you know, but I well, will. I got, a, I got a true story for you if that's what you're wanting. Oh, that's what I want. But I just was going to tell you last night I broke over 193 people. 193. Oh. 193,000 people. Thousand. Yeah, that, yeah, that's terrific. That's that's up thirty some thousand from the last time I talked to you. Yeah, it's that's great. It's that's growing. Great. But yeah, let's that's hear the great. scary story. Well, here's I'll, I'll kind of give you the backstory of it. When I I when I, this happened with what I just told you that story of my aunt and my cousin, and it was like a 
a couple of weeks later, I moved to the East Coast, over to Rhode Island, Massachusetts, over in there, and started a job I was a foreman of. And on the weekends, I knew a couple of people there that were friends, and the one guy I knew, I would use him like, I would investigate on the weekends by myself, always by myself, and I used him, my friend that I knew, who he lived in Fall River, Massachusetts. And actually, at the time, I was living about, oh, a block or two from the Lizzie Borden house in Fall River. And and he would give me spots. He knew all the local spots that were, you know, not famous, but very haunted or whatever. And every weekend, I would go check them out, investigate them or whatever. Well, this went on for about a year, maybe two years, year and a half. And it, anyway, it come the Halloween of 1989, I think, or 88, somewhere around there, one of them two years. And he'd give me these directions, and sometimes he would show me, but he didn't. He said, I don't want nothing to do with it. Here's the directions. You want to go, go. So I said, okay, he's that kind of weird, no biggie. So I go, there's Halloween. I figure, you know, it's these, it's woods. It's just woods. And I'm like, what's so haunted about these woods? So I go there, it's a, you know, little off little town up in Rhode Island. And so I park, and I get out, and I'm, you know, I'm a backwoodsman, so I hike up through these woods about, I don't know, 11... 30, quarter to midnight or so, and I'm going up through these woods, and I'm hearing some stuff, and I'm, so I get down crouching, like, in my military mode, crawling up over these logs. <laughs> I peek up over this log down in this little valley a little bit. I'm not that far away, but there's 13 people dancing around in this bonfire, and they got a goat down there, and I'm thinking, well, they must be having some kind of barbecue, and they got a dagger and all kind of stuff, and they're doing all this witchy kind of stuff, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. Here it is about midnight. Uh, I'm in the middle of the woods. <laughs> there's 13 people dancing around a fire. they got a goat and there's a dagger. I'm thinking, who am I to interrupt this barbecue? I'm going to back out of here real slowly. <laughs> so I, so I, start, I start backing out of there, and they're starting chanting and dancing and all kind of crazy stuff. I'm like, oh, Lord, this is a scene from a bad movie already. I can see it. So I got out of there, and here to come to find out, I didn't find this out for years later. Actually, until about three years ago, I found this out. That land in that property was where the parent farm was right next to, where the conjuring was made about all that crazy witch demon stuff. Well, there's still people practicing witchcraft out there in the woods of Rhode Island. At least they was back in 88 and 89. And, and I didn't, I never made the connection until I, I seen that movie, and I was like, holy crap, there's, there's still people out there practicing, you know, some serious witchcraft stuff. And I just happened to, I was, I said to my friend, were you trying to get me killed? If I, my goodness, that was like a scene of a bad movie. I backed out of there real quick. I was like, and it, the shocker was, like three years ago when I put all the pieces together, I was like, holy crap, man, what the heck was going on down there? But that's, that was a true story of the craziness I went through some days. That was one day, that was one Halloween in 88 or 89. Well, I but that's what happened. I, I was going to tell you that was not a barbecue, and I know it wasn't a barbecue. It was just being uh, silly. No, that wasn't a barbecue. That was some serious. They, they, just practice, they still practice witchcraft out there in some of them woods. Matter of fact, uh, it's funny. It was sometime around those same years they caught people practicing the same stuff over in Fall River, and they and they they got them for murder. They killed two or three people or so, prostitutes, and they was practicing black magic and stuff. Now, I don't know if it was the same people or the same clan, but I know one thing. I was backing out of there slowly and quietly. I would have, because you might have not be here today. I, exactly. Yeah, believe they, me, I was they, like, what They the? would have looked at the, the goat and said, no, this is better yet. It, yeah. It, you, you know, I wasn't, it, I wasn't into all that stuff like I know now, but I knew enough to know that, look, it's almost midnight. It's Halloween. There's 13 of them down there in robes. They're dancing around. they got a dagger. They're chanting stuff. It's time for me to get out of here. Well, you know, <laughs> my very first job in radio uh, was up in, well, up in Battleground, Washington area. And uh, it, it was strange. I went in there, and they hired me to do Top 40. I walk in there after I got the apartment and got all this stuff, and the owner of the station said, well, we're not going to do Top 40 anymore. We're going over to talk radio. And I, you know, I, I, I don't know how to do talk radio. 
but you know, I needed the job, so I, I took it. Right. And he said, well, what do you want to do in talk radio? And I, I just happened to listen on the radio that there was a, uh, a cult there that uh, people, you know, 